Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkin. I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, going over what's going on on the JP side of the game. Um, last time I talked about the JP side, people were pretty open to it, so I'm going to keep doing that. It's going to be a little bit delayed from when it actually happens on JP, just because I need to give it time to fully understand what's going on. I don't like misinforming people about stuff by trying to rush things for forward, and because I don't know Japanese, it's easier just to let people kind of solve it already. <laughs> and get that done out of the way. So yeah, it's gonna be today's video. Let's get into it. So they've been doing this arc one, um, if you don't know, they've been doing like basically an arc one improvement over the last couple of, um, for the entire month basically, trying to get stuff a little bit better. Uh, they did tutorial summon improvements, the recommended support summon thingy, party max stuff, which is all pretty nice, quest start animation skip, all things that are pretty nice, but there's some really good stuff here in part three. So the thing they did is that they introduced Pure Prism, and what you can do with the Pure Prism is that you can exchange it for items that are available up until Cosmo and the Lost Belt, which means Ascension items, pieces uh, and monuments, and gems, which is of every class. Um, and the, the, but what they mean by this is that in case you're thinking like, oh, does that mean I once I hit Cosmo and the Lost Belt, I can't use this? No, what it means is that anything that was released after Cosmos and the Lost Belt, you won't be able to spend stuff on. That's all it really means. So there's still plenty of Ascension items that were released before then. So very nice. You can get up to 100 of each item in exchangeable with pure prisms for bronze skill gems and bronze Ascension items, bones, dragon fangs, etc. Cost is one pure prism per exchange. For silver skill gems, uh, pieces, and silver ascension items, seeds, feathers, and gears, cost two pure prisms per exchange. And for gold, it's three. And how to acquire is to clear the main quest. Retroactive pure prism rewards for clear quests will be sent to the gift box. Uh, so as long as you clear the main quest, you will get these pretty easy. And this is insane, to be honest. One of the hardest things to get into in Fago is the material grind, because it's used for basically everything. Um, they've been a little bit easier, especially on the JP side, it's a little bit easier now to grind for QP, but actually grinding for ascension materials is a real big pain in the butt, especially for newer um, servants. So what this does is like it gives access to a lot of items that are very hard to get, like bones, super hard to get not super hard to get but you need a lot of them you can just get a hundred of them easy dragon fangs like there's a lot of ascension items that were released before uh i think these are the specific items yeah so you got unlucky bone you got voids refuse you got heroes proof you need a lot of these dragon fang chains of the fool chains especially are hard to get um and a lot of units use a lot of chains stinger of certain death Magical Cerebrosal Fluid, Night Weeping Iron Stake. I know for this one, it's a huge pain because I think what are the units that use it? Erish is the one that uses it the most, but it's kind of a newer bronze item and you just don't get a lot of stakes and they always need a lot of it. Gunpowder, Tiny, I think this is where, yeah, this is, um, it's getting into Lost Belt territory. And then if we go to we got Ghost Lanterns, we got Yggdrasil Seeds, uh, Topula Twin Crystals, Phoenix Plum, Snake Jewel. I can say right now, Phoenix Plum, I remember when I started the game, this is the hardest thing to kind of get. This is definitely one of the top up there hardest items that you can get, and now you can pretty easily get it. Homunculus Babies, Meteoric, Meteoric uh, Horseshoe, Forbidden Pages, so many units use Forbidden Pages that it's kind of crazy. Like, all the best casters in the game. Like, it doesn't matter when you were released, chances are they use Forbidden Page and they always need a lot of them. That's almost always the way it's been. Infinity Gear, Medal of the Great Knight, Seashell of Remembrance. This one's kind of a pain in the butt to get, even for someone like me, because usually these don't get released outside of summer. Like, you can see here, like, it was in Okeanos and it's in Babylonia. But to be honest, they only added it to Okeanos after the fact. It wasn't, like, originally planned for it because this was usually a summer only item. Kotan Mag Magatama, and this is getting into um, Perform Permafrost is when the um, Lost Belt stuff starts. And finally for gold, um, we got the Scale, we got the Talon of Chaos, Heart of the Foreign God, Bloodstone Tears, Black Tallow, the Spirit Root, 
Warhorse, um, Lamp of Demon Sealing, the Scarab of Wisdom, the I don't know how to pronounce this, the Cursed Beast uh, Cholkist, Bizarre God Wine, and I think that's it for yes, and that's basically all the goat stuff in there. So all those items I mentioned should be available in the shop, and like I said, you should take advantage of this because this is going to help ascend a lot of units. I think the only ones it doesn't kind of help with are the ones that need newer materials, but there's so many units that use so many of the old ones that it honestly... I cannot stay stress this, and a lot of people are saying this is the best update that Fugo has ever had because they've made the Ascension stuff so much easier. Um, it's really, in general, just a really good move on their part. <laughs> I think the only thing I would suggest they do is that they should do it for the Lost Belt as well. Because there's plenty of Lost Belt items that um, can be kind of a pain in the ass to get. For example, Scotty uses a lot of the um, Permafrost one, the silver one. And for her being a caster, that could be a big pain in the ass, especially if you're trying to get all her skills to rank 10. But this is a fantastic introduction. I hope they do more stuff like this because it was a really good idea. This is a fantastic idea on their part, I think. Um, the tutorial mission has added extra missions. Clearing those missions will reward players with various pieces of monuments and gems. Free access to the prison tower quest. This you had to pay, I think, um, uh, cubes, the golden cubes. I actually don't remember what their name are right now. Uh, the, man, the mana cubes that are not green, but they are gold. I think they're called the golden ones. Um, yeah, if you bought this in the past, you just get them back. And now it's just kind of free and open and you can do it. Which is, it's important to do it because it, it's the only way that, it, it's, this is the only event that explains who Dantes is and what he does. And he shows up in Solomon. So, if you ever wondered who the hell is that guy, it's very important to actually do this. And of course, now if you're playing on the JP side of the game... A little bit different because um, most Americans skip the story unless they know Japanese. Not only that, he also this also came up with a new challenge quest that rewards three tickets, which is nice. Free access to Arjuna and Karna. If you bought anything, exchanged anything for them, you will be refunded, which is pretty nice. The Da Vinci Workshop added the Dantes and Arjuna costume dress, which is pretty nice. I think it's there from. I don't know. I think it's permanent. They say from January 19th, so yeah, that's it's just, it just means it's out. Two very good costumes. Arjuna has monkey. Dantes has uh, summer golf stylings. Very nice. And yeah, that's kind of it. Not only that, they also released a banner that has... One has Ar Arjuna and Karna. The other has Dantes and Nightingale. And Dantes is one of the, was one of the top five units who did not get a solo raid-up banner in years. And, um, yeah, I think he, he was, like, in number five. I think the top five is, uh, Summer Saber, Arjuna Alter, um, Iskandar, but he just recently got one, Dantes, and I think, man, who, it might be, um, what is it, Ivan? I think it might be Ivan. Okay, I think I have the list here. The, the top is Saber, Summer, um, Iskandar, Ivan, Arjuna Alter, Dantes, Saber Shiki, which I think she actually just recently got reran, but I actually don't remember that. I guess more people would make a better mention of it. Summer BB and King Asan. So, the fact that they brought him back is very good because I really like Dantes. He's probably on JP side, I wonder if he actually needs a buff, because he just can't compare to some of the other quick servants that are out there. But I really like him, and I like his style, so definitely worth it to get if you're someone who likes, I guess, Dantes. Definitely worth it for me, I should say. But anyway, yeah, a lot of good stuff, man. And if you're at wondering what are the chances of the NA version of this getting it early, uh, I don't know about this one. They, we might, but this feels like because they're doing like a campaign thing, obviously we would need to at least get the Arjuna Alter costume dress, which we're not getting till the anniversary, so I don't think we're going to get that early. Um, yeah, I don't see them doing this early. M maybe a year early, but if... Hmm. It's going to really depend on how this year kind of goes. Because sometimes it, it kind of varies on when they want to bring over improvements. If the improvement was a part of a big celebration, they will wait. And they won't do it. Like, 
like for example minor one uh skahach skathach um her animation update was with her uh, Skafes, which is coming pretty soon. No, well, not pretty soon, but it's coming this year. Um, but they decided to give us the animation early. And because it's just the animation, they're like, eh, just have it early. It's fine. But I think anything that is, like, important to, like, a celebration of some kind, they probably won't release it early. This one doesn't really fall into that category, so I really think we could potentially have it early. The only reason I don't think we would get it early is because... You can see here, it's basically like a full month of slowly releasing this stuff. And they like doing updates, but I don't think they like doing this kind of update. But hey, you never know. It could happen. But that is the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you did, feel free to leave a like. Comment down below. Tell me how you feel about any of the things we talked. About, I talked about here. <laughs> we making it seem like you are here too. I really do think that eventually all the units in the top uh, 10... Maybe not top 10, maybe top 6 are going to be coming back. The only one that can't come back, I think, is Saber Shiki, because it's kind of tough to bring her back. But I honestly think that eventually we will get a Saber Summer rerun. We are going to get a Arjuna Alter. We came close. This is technically an Arjuna rerun. It's not the right Arjuna, but they're getting there eventually. Um, Ivan is also another one where it's like, I don't know in what situation would they ever bring back Ivan. But I guess it's kind of wait and see on a lot of that. Uh, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thanks for watching. You guys have a good night. And have a good day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.